You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That young man out there is Rick Levy in San Diego. Hey Rick, did you did you move stuff around in your in your in your cava? <laughs> well, we are recording during the day today. And oh, usually okay. usually we're recording kind of late at night. And right. so the lighting in this room completely changes. And so I've had to kind of rejigger, you know, the way I have my, uh, the way I have my, my camera set up so that I have even lighting and, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little older. Things are starting to sag. You want to get, your, you say, get your lighting just right. <laughs> get a makeup on because, you know, my makeup yeah. person went on strike and, you know, my guy liner is running and I... <laughs> Uh, Rick and I have been tasting and fell all over ourselves with Celestial, and tonight or today, depending on where and when you're watching and listening, um, we are going to be trying Celestial Reposado. Now, the, here's here's the thing: Celestial Reposado is also considered organic. If if if, if the USDA is allowing you to use the USDA seal on uh, on a reposado. Uh, it, it, and most often Rick and I have had enough of these, uh, organic tequilas that it will allow you to, to say that your repo is, you know, uh, organic. Um, so does it say, do we know any information about how long these are resting in, in, in what barrels do, do we Yeah, have- you know, we don't have any information on that. We don't know how many months in the barrel these are. You know, of course, we know the range they have to fall within to, to be within the category. But we yeah. we're not sure of their exact process with these. Uh, we do know that 1480, non 1480 Tequila Las Americas uh, generally has, you know, an excellent process. They do uh, open air fermentation. They have, uh, they have traditional hornos, uh, the masonry ovens for baking their uh, agaves. Um, so, you know, they generally have a, a, a pretty excellent process there. The only thing they don't have, which is surprising, well, no, not, not, so, not so surprising. They don't have a Taona. As right. far as I know, but um, and the, and there's a reason for that because the majority of the tequilas that come out of there are listed as organic, and um, I guess a stone wheel would be considered inorganic. It would leave too many too many variables for for the organic certifying agency, which in this case is BioAgriCert, um, to uh, to 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 try to um, justify it being organic because organic. Organic tequilas go through two. Pro- it's, it's a two-step process from the field to the distillery, from the distillery to the bottle. And even I, I had heard that even uh, if you're looking uh, for mezcals that are 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 have a USDA seal, they have to have a certain. Uh, the distillery has to have a certain uh, layout. So that when they drop the agaves off, it is still considered organic, and it, and it, in other words, it is not um, contaminated or cross-contaminated with something else. Okay, right. and I guess with a stone wheel, you, you would consider that a cross-contamination, um, but that's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just not organic. But it's about as organic as you're going to get. I don't. Uh, it would be, it would be fantastic if uh, if somebody could figure out how to do that, though. Because wouldn't well, it be great to have an organic Tahona tequila? Well, you oh. know, who, you know who could probably, you know who could probably get away with that if if you wanted to. Again, being uh, being certified organic is a is an individual uh, decision. I would say that Felipe Camarena, with with his with his stainless right. with, his steel, with his mechanical his mechanical uh, you know Franken Franken Frankenstein, Franken, <laughs> uh, would probably come real close, but. But, you know, again, there's a lot of money to be certified. It costs money. It's not cheap. And, and apparently Las Americas is doing it quite well. So um, that being said, look at the bubbles on this thing. There's a bubbles on <laughs> this. From, the, from what I can tell, Rick, from the color, this looks like an eight, six to eight months maybe rested. Yeah. In, I don't know what kind of barrel. Now, here's, here's something interesting. The cork and the stopper are different on this reposado. Not sure why. Maybe they went through a packaging change. So this is the Blanco stopper, right? And then this is the Reposado stopper. Yeah, and this is this so is the stopper like... has a different cut to it. 
as well yep. as different material. We got natural cork here versus synthetic. Yep. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Apparently, it doesn't. If it's a if it passed the USDA muster, I'm using my Sasso Jarrito that I normally use for mezcal. I, I I like to I like to change it up a little bit. So you know we've. We've uh, sang the praises of the of, of the Jarrito over and over and over again all season long last year on Sipping Off the Cuff. And, um, Nothing uh, hides from the Jarrito. I love to say that. <laughs> well, that's true. Nothing – well, you know, they used to say that about the – about the. Uh, uh, we used to say that about the Riedel is that the Riedel brings out the nasty in a tequila. It used to. But I think the process of tequila making is, has, has really outpaced – the the current glassware and i think this glassware really really just look at you i'm you getting the tingles stars, again yeah. mike just like with the blanco oh. oh oh now you know at first pass and you don't have to dig down deep to get anything out uh, you know with these glasses at first pass i still i still smell agave i don't right? even smell wood I, i'm not i'm not getting Barrel essence, you know, no spiciness or sweetness. I'm still getting agave. Yeah, I'm getting the and the minerality. So it's just a little bit warmer, just a tinge warmer. Right, right. And then when you dig in, you can uh, you can get a little bit more of the barrel. Well, we said I I, I said uh, for the blanco, I thought I thought that the the nose and the flavor profile were brighter, you know. And and you're right. This one is is kind of it's denser, probably due to due to the wood, but but it's still a it's unmistakable agave right off the bat, which is like I say, kind of weird because this is the first this is the first time you and I have done any tastings this year for 2019, but I have had tastings already with uh, the other TJs, and this one, um, the. There, I think you and I said this last year, and a lot of the other TJs that the Reposado category has really started to make statements for several of the brands. Right, and and this one kind of harkens back to to the uh, Felipe Camarena thing, where the barrel takes a back seat to the agave. It's still, I think, what's going on is the the the, the barrels are presenting the agave. Well, I don't know. We haven't we haven't tasted yet. So let's not well, okay. you know, let's not diminish the barrel work at least, yet. At least in the nose, okay? Right. And and I haven't had just to be fair and to be honest, I haven't had a chance to even open these. I, I opened these right off camera before we came on, so I haven't had any uh, ahead of time. So I have no idea what I am the, I am getting some nice warm barrel notes here. Finally, is it opening up for you? Because because I have the wider jarrito, the, the the one with the, the, the yeah, wider I'm using the, the tequila jarrito. It's I, really, I, it's really lovely. Only to the only, you know what? If I dig to the side, I can get some of the spiciness from the barrel. But I really, you know, it's odd. I gotta, I gotta dig for the barrel. If I'm looking yeah. for barrel, I can't find I it. I don't know. With what I'm getting, I wouldn't be surprised if we have some nice barrel sweetness balanced with the great agave that we're picking up. Maybe so. I know that at first pass, it it smelled just a little denser on on the agave. Right. As as it did, just exactly. It really, you know, the agave is jumping up at you. you yeah. Know, from, oh, the, yeah. from the blanco as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's taste it. Let's dig in. Mm. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> oh yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of caramel, a little bit of baking spice. There's there's a little bit of honey too. It's almost yeah. like. That's it's almost like honey. Perfect honey, yeah. Oh my god! But you know mm. what, Rick? Um, again, on the intake was the agave, right? And, oh, and then it starts to sweeten up. Yeah, but the funny thing was, I on the retro nasal is where I started to smell barrel. I had oh to really, <clears throat> you know, give it to clear my throat and just try to get the try to have have the retro nasal come up through my nose. Um. Wow, that's I love it, man. that's some mellow it's got, stuff. It's got some nice barrel sweetness to to it, but it's not overly sweet. Mm -mm. 
it's it's in a really nice zone for me. I'm really digging it. Yeah, it's it's very reminiscent of of the idea of the, of the Felipe Camarena idea, where the barrel takes a back seat to the agave. And so in this case, I, I agree. I think I I don't know if you agree with me, but I think the wood is presenting the agave to us in a very elegant way. I I think the wood just just enough wood to round round it out. Yeah, but I'm getting barrel notes in there too. So like, I wouldn't be surprised oh, if these are okay. like used bourbon barrels. Um, it could be maybe what they're doing is, uh, and you know, this is pure conjecture because we don't know. But maybe yeah. they're doing you know a short resting period with a deeper toast on the barrel. Um, I, I, I we got nothing there. There, uh, like sadly, we got no information, no POS from the from the uh, marketing company. The the script, if you see this, some script in here, it's written in Spanish. So off camera, I read this to Rick. Basically, it's about the guy who founded this tequila uh, that the, the uh, indigenous people of the area called, uh, uh, referred to tequila as a gift from the heavens. So it's a it was a celestial gift, and hence the name Celestial, and that he had to... Whoever founded this had to in the in Amatitan had to share it with with us, and we're glad he did. I, you know, it's probably a made up little story, but it's 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 nice. What do you think, Rick? Six to eight months in barrels. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it's gonna. I don't. I, I would be surprised if it went longer than eight, maybe nine months. The, does the website give us any information? No. The website no. has some nice tasting notes, but they don't give a lot of information on production. They have some pictures of the production process. So you see the traditional hornos, the uh, masonry ovens, the uh, the open air fermentation, uh, stainless steel still, but I believe at 1480, they do have some copper components inside the still um, or, you know, the, copper the, tubing. And, copper tubing, yeah. Yeah. It's it's beautiful. It really is uh, gorgeous. Uh, this now, really does it for me. This is my God, sweet spot. Excuse me, I, I burped. <laughs> <laughs> it's my dog who wants to get out, but I'll do that later. Um, yeah, the I I'm not. Uh, you know, if you're ex okay, on me on my side here, if you're expecting a a more of the barrel notes, you you probably won't get that. But if you're an agave nut, you're going to love this tequila because it really does. I think the barrel notes take a back seat to the agave. I think the agave is very well presented. It's a fantastic presentation. Of yeah. The agave, yeah. Um, balanced also as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it is, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit warmer than the Blanco. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, barrel. Yeah. Um, so it's not like the barrel's missing. It's not like the barrel is just kind of rounding out some edges or something. You know, there is a, there is barrel component to the flavor, and it's done very well. Yeah, um, um, it's still a complex tequila. You just you just you know, it's just not what you expect. Uh, I do believe that this is another another brand that's making a statement with their reposado. Um, I, I don't know about you, Rick, but right off the bat, I'm saying absolutely. Brand Brand of Promise nominee in the Reposado organic Reposado category. By the way, what do you think of the of the the packaging? I know we talked about. I it think all the graphics are beautiful, and I love the texture of the uh, label. The way they went with something that was unvarnished. Um, it's got um, it's got uh, you know it's not just printing. It has like some raised ink as well. So you know somebody really paid paid attention to uh, the details on this, and I like it. I like what yeah, they did. I I also like the color choices that they use because the USDA seal pops out at you. You, they're right. not, you know, it's not like some on some other uh, organic tequilas, you'll see it like on the glass, you know, and and uh, and sometimes even the kosher seal will be uh, you have to look for them really hard. This one, this one pops out right at you, you know, right there. See right there. That's this is an organic tequila. So. Uh, congratulations to Celestial. I think I think it's it's a worthy worthy uh, uh, not only in in uh, in the Reposado category organic, but also in packaging brand of promise. 
That, I haven't I haven't done comprehensive research on pricing for this, but I I do have uh, OldTownTequila.com up right now, and uh, they have it available for forty nine dollars. Well, now see that that's something. I but I think it's worth it. Uh, I, yeah. I I I don't you know, think it's a little bit of a bigger jump than you normally than you would normally see from the Blanco. Right. But uh, you know, it is a it's a fantastic reposado. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's well worth looking for. Uh, that's that's our take on on Tequila Celestial. You have been watching and listening to uh, sipping off the cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media. All of our all of our platforms. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that red button, subscribe. You'll make Rick very happy. His hair will stand. Like- <laughs> My hair mine will stand will, up mine higher will, than it already does. Mine will completely just fall out. Uh, if you're listening to us on, on Anchor FM or anywhere where you get your podcast, please do so. Don't drink. Don't drive. Let us do the drinking You can while you're driving. But whatever <laughs> you do, whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>